Hello fellow survivors and welcome back to Road to 500 Days. We are here in Milton still and things are looking great. They're looking up Millhouse or whatever it is. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say to start there. <laughs> anyway, here we are. So uh, we are here in our base, the farm in, um, in uh, Paradise Meadows in the south of Milton. And we've done almost everything we want to do in um, in this region, actually. Just a few things left to do. We need to go to the north. Let's have a look at the map. So we mapped quite a bit because of the Polaroid. There's a few things we haven't done, though. Well, we haven't really mapped this part. But um, over here, where we killed the bear, there's a few bits and bobs to do. And then over here is a, a, a cave that leads to the plane crash, which you can see in Wintermute, Will's plane. So we need to go do that. We're also going to check out the moose because the moose evaded us last time. And then that's pretty much it. We'll have a look around a couple of misc places here and there too. We're not going to explore the basin particularly much because we've already been there. And we're going to come back to the basin and treat it as like a new region almost. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to explore the rest of Milton and also map a few things that I have been missing. And that's pretty much it, I would say. And actually, hold on. I'm going to grab some charcoal which I have loads. This seems excessive, but you'll see. We'll go through them very quickly. And uh, I don't think we're going to get that much loot going out and around. Uh, so we can... Uh, this has been red. Uh, so let's just drop this over here for firewood. What are we looking for wood uh, fuel? Uh, let's take uh, three coal with us or something like that. Water. Let's take a few more liters of water with us. Uh, let's leave this book here to read. Actually, we'll put it in here. And is there anything else I can leave behind? Or are we done? I guess we're done. I'm not sure we need to carry this Bray House pie with us, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't think it's really worth it. It doesn't weigh much, though. Could use it as a backup as well. Maybe just keep it for now. We do smell. These things make us smell. Is this is the issue? Oh. As in the pies, because they have meat in them. They make us smell. Oops. <laughs> Oops. I started eating it because I clicked it by accident. How come it says now is zero? And I got this for one hour. Rather than three hours. Ah. Huh. Interesting. Oh. I'll pretend that didn't happen, I guess. And yeah, I guess that's it. So why don't we just go? Let's go. And... Uh, Explore the rest of Milton, map a bit more, and see if the moose is there too. All right, it's a fairly okay day. Uh, let's take a couple of bear meat with us. Yeah, and I think that's enough. I'm not too worried about wolves because I've killed all of them. There's one here though. They are persistent. Wolves can also respawn very quickly. They can respawn as quickly as uh, every three days. So uh, if you kill all the wolves, they will still be a menace for a little while. Um, oh, sorry, they'll, they'll come back very quickly. That's what I mean. It doesn't necessarily take three days, but usually... By the time it's been one week, the wolves have all come back. I think it's like between three and seven. We're going to test that in a later episode involving the basin. But in case it's changed. Well, that means that like there'll always be wolves around. I'm going to map a little bit here. <clears throat> because uh, I think this part is black on the map. Yeah, we're missing some stuff. Oh, burdock, but we don't really need the burdock. There is one recipe that requires a burdock, which I think is the prepper cache. Sorry, the prepper's pie, but we don't have that, so. And uh, in the last episode, just before we ended, I read a skill book that I had laying around about fire starting, and I reached fire starting level 5, which is fantastic. I love having fire starting level 5. It takes a while to get, unless you cheese it by chaining together a bunch of fires um <clears throat> it usually takes a while but having fire starting level five is great because uh it allows you to start fires 
Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a lot. Basically twice as fast. This is the wolf I killed uh, last episode. Oh, no, I'm not going to loot any of this stuff. Go for this. These feathers. Um, so... It doesn't really matter anything. By the time you reach level 3 or... or level 3 fire starting is really what you want. And you can even get that with the, <coughs> with the perk, the fire starter perk, which requires 500 fires to achieve. Uh, and if you get level 3, that's really what matters. Because at level 3 fire starting, you um, you don't need tinder anymore. And your chance to start a fire is, is pretty high. Okay, it doesn't show... Doesn't show the lake for some reason. Uh, so by the time you get to level th three, it's you're good with fires, really. We need four more cattails. But uh, having level five is great, just because you start, you, you're practically guaranteed to always succeed with a fire. So even before I reach level five, fire starting every now and then, you know, I would light a fire and it says ninety percent or ninety-five percent, and then uh, wait, that moved. No, I didn't. Oh. Um, and then it would fail, you know. But now with level 5, you almost almost never fail fire starting. And it goes much faster, which is especially handy with the magvan. So it's something that is non-essential, but very nice to just have. And now really the next skill to level up is really mending. And eventually ice fishing as well. Wolf on my right. Up there, I think. Yeah, smell, so they're coming for me. Uh, I need to make some more arrows. I can hear the wolf. He was right there. We're gonna warm up in this cave. Mm, where did he go? We're gonna map this cave as well. Should be warm here. There we are. Map this. There we go. And uh, let's actually pass a little bit of time to warm up uh, a little bit more. There we are. It's a bit better now. And let's check on the moose again. It looks like we haven't actually mapped that either, so we should really map some more. All the way to the car. Uh, this moose, if it is there, it owes me an arrow. If you didn't watch it in the last episode, I was hunting the moose. And it despawned as I was hunting it and it had an arrow in it. So that arrow, I'm guessing, will either be lost forever or it will still be on the moose. Or more likely, it is somewhere random in the world. It may have fallen and then it will reappear at some random point. All right, let's see if the moose is back. If the moose is back, we are going to kill the moose, but we might transport it back later, we'll see. So this is where the moose spawned. There, the moose is back. Okay, well then, that's what we're going to do first. We're going to ha grab this moose uh, so we have it for this region and also got a hide. Now, we only have four arrows is the only thing. But uh, I think it'll be okay. Uh, I didn't realize I had such few arrows. I need to make more. I could have made some more before we left, but yeah, let's try and get him from here. That second shot marginally missed because he moved at the last second. He's going to run for a little bit, then he's going to stop running and go back to where he just was. I'm going to get my arrow. Need all the arrows I can get, because I missed one. And one is in him. The other marginally missed. I don't think I hit him in the head, so... Is he going for me? I don't think so. He's, he's not going. He's just running around, right? Yeah, he's just running around. Yeah, we got this thing to go. Yeah, he's going really far, though. With movies, you really want to avoid getting stomped. You know, if you're hunting a bear and you get mauled, 
you probably will survive because the bear does like a percentage damage if you're low health the bear will kill you but high health the bear will not kill you he will just do a lot of damage destroy your clothes and also um uh cause bleeds but you'll probably survive and if you can just maintain that you'll be fine the moose however yeah it doesn't kill you but it's annoying that you get broken ribs and you don't want that so try and avoid getting stumped oh my god i had an auto walk can you believe it i had an auto walk <laughs> I was like, okay, wait, wait, why am I still walking, you know? Oh, yeah. I don't use auto walk, kids. Alright, so question, how many arrows does he have in him? I'm assuming the answer is two. Yes. I didn't get my arrow back. All right, uh, before I harvest it, I'm going to definitely quarter this guy because the weather's really bad. So I would like to warm up and try and quarter him in pieces if I can. Let's leave the carcass for now. I'll save the match. Uh, yeah, we need some cattails too to replenish those. We'll come back to the carcass in a minute. And we need four of these. Now we're gonna cook this guy later. Okay, I just want a map here. My fingers feel numb. So I'm only marginally cold here, I think. If I do this, I presume I will warm up. Valid location, why? Was this on the ice? Did make a difference. We just go to the trailer, but if I do this for a little bit, uh, barely worth doing to be fair. Great, create a snow shelter, but minus two degrees, uh, that is very good. <clears throat> so let's see if we can get shelter here. Yeah. I could maybe quarter him, and if I'm lucky, I don't think I have shelter here though. Unless I sit, like, right there. Uh, even then, it's no good. Okay, I'm just doing this to save a match, really. If the wind died... Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's too... It's too cold. And the wind is kind of picking up as well. Uh, let's uh, actually do this. We're going to uh, pass for one hour or so. See if the wind dies down. It doesn't seem like all or changes. If anything, it looks to be picking up. It's ten. I think it's getting colder. Sure, getting cold. One, one last try. That's it. That's it. Look. Now it's still cold, but I'm in shelter. And it's only minus five. It's actually sunny, I think. Gotta we could actually now. make a fire. Yeah, yeah we can. Sweet. <clears throat> Look how fast it goes now. Look, that's with the mag lens. And it goes so fast because of level five. Fire stuff. <laughs> nice. All right, let's build this reactor. We are back. All right. There we are. We got a fire going. That's how stingy I am with matches. That I actually uh, don't want to use it for a whole moose, you know. We're going to do the same thing as we did with the um, the bear. We're going to cook some stuff. Uh, while we quarter it. Uh, but if this was the first kill I did, I hadn't killed the bear... I would have, um, I would have used the match here, <clears throat> but because I killed the bear early and I have a ton of meat and stuff back at the base, I don't really need this meat. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, would, I want it, but it's not as urgent, if that makes sense. 36. I'm gonna get uh, a little bit more. Whether I, I wanted to use the mag lens or get a good opportunity to quarter at 44. And I got. Uh, I think I'm gonna grab. Uh, yeah, two more. Let's see. Uh huh. Let's get six kilos. And then we'll probably quarter from there, I think. All right. So this is all cooked. Uh, we're going to eat the wolf meat. We're going to have a drink. <clears throat> and then we're going to have to cook this uh, moose meat. It takes 46 minutes. And then I'm going to have to quarter and cancel so I can do it. But because the timer is gone, you just have to kind of like wing it. It doesn't say how long it's been doing it. I would say about there. Yeah, you can also uh, hear the meat sizzling. Gives you an idea. Another 46 minutes. And yeah, that was actually pretty close. And now we're going to do the same thing. And stop. Ten minutes off this time. Grab that. Grab that. A map too, actually, up here. <clears throat> I could have done that. Oh well. And now we can do the rest. There we go. That still has eight minutes, so let's do this. If I can. Can't. Okay. Then we will do dropping the revoir. I'm gonna, I don't think we'll take all the way back to base. Maybe we will, but I don't think so. Eye is very heavy as well. Can't actually move now. <laughs> oh, there's not another Aurora. Take all the guts. We're actually going to take this... Now, actually, we are going to take it back to base. Tell you why. Because we're not going to come back the same way later. Okay, and that's cooked. And cooked. Oh. Oh, there are more meat bags. Does this all fit, actually? I don't even know. Uh, it doesn't fit. No, it does. Oh, that's pretty heavy, though. Okay, we're going to do two things. We're going to eat our... Uh, this pie that I didn't finish eating for some reason. I'm not sure what happened there. And I think we get two hours now. Yes. And then we're going to eat one of our peach pies as well. Uh, which is going to help a bit. Uh, we're actually going to drink, eat... Two of those, I think. There we are. So now we're actually not heavy. Then I, I, I haven't actually tested it, but if I have a torch... Do I keep the torch on me? Let's just see. I'm just going to check. Yeah, but it goes out. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, so we're giving... Saying thanks to this fire. We're, we're off now. Uh, let me... Uh, warm this up first. The birch tea. Yeah, okay, now we can go. We're going to take this back to base, just like we did last time with the bear. We'll harvest it there, and then we'll go back out again. I was initially going to leave it or take it to the... Oh, wait, uh, to the trailer. Uh, but, um, the problem if I do that, then I have to go back up here. And I think I'd rather just drag this back to base now. Because um, when I go back up and explore here after, I'm not coming back this way. Because where, the, where we killed the bear, that leads up to a cave, and that's a one-way cave. Um, so you can't go back after. I mean, you can, but it's tricky and it's not worth the effort. So it's better to just... Um, 
just get this out of the way now. We'll go back to base. We will harvest all this meat. And then we'll go back out again the next day or the day after that. I think that's the best course of action here. So we're going to be a bit slow because we are we're not heavy in terms of what we're carrying but we are carrying the maximum capacity really of this yeah it's another podcast episode <laughs> now uh, i'm not too worried about wolves because we killed so many wolves here in mountain town it this is a good region for beginners because there's so many structures but there are also a lot of wolves so there is that um uh, but there was one wolf that I heard who is around here, and I stink, so I gotta be a bit careful. But other than that, I think they're all dead, so I think this is one wolf. Although, because I have three stink lines now, because I couldn't fit all the meat in there, the wolves could come from Milton as well. But I have to be a bit careful. There we are. There he is. I think this is probably the only wolf. I need to make more arrows also. Oh, hello. There are more of them. Are you coming from Milton or where are you coming from? Alright. Onwards we go. There were two of them. Might be more. They respawn fast. Could be as quick as three days, like I said. But also, because I stink, I could be attracting the wolves from Milton. Uh, on Intlob especially, like the wolves can detect you from really far away if you have stink lines. So, and I'm moving quite slowly. And this is a very linear map, so the odds of running into a wolf is pretty high, to be fair. And this is one of those situations where I say, thank God that they have auto walk in this game, because holding the button is just, oof. They didn't always have that. And also, if you didn't know, yes, it does have it. <laughs> they added auto walking in, I'm pretty sure it was the same patch where they added Polaroids and um, the spray can. I think the patch was caused called fearless navigator and i think that patch oh come on it's not that steep here come on oh come on it's it's not that steep there we go uh fearless navigator i think that patch was 2020 maybe 2021 i'm not 100 sure somewhere on that and then they, they added auto walk to the game uh, and some other accessibility features. It's off by default. You have to actually go in and enable it. And uh, uh, on PC it's set and it makes life so much easier. The only thing about auto walking is you got to remember that you have it on. <laughs> because if not, you can walk off things. Surprisingly, I have actually almost never had accidents. The one you saw earlier where I walked off the log with auto walk was because I was too slow to disable it. So that was an accident. <laughs> if that had been a cliff, I would have been dead. But it was just a tree, so I survived. But there have been people who have uh, walked off a cliff or walked off the train tracks in the ravine, those sort of things, because they have um, uh, the uh, auto walk on. So it can kill you if you... Uh, if you're not paying attention, it, it can kill you. So be careful with auto walk. And I often turn it off when I'm near edges and just walk normally. Uh, but when I'm um, walking long distances like this, it's, it's good. Especially here, because this is so heavy. And uh, again, once again, the MVP is the Trevar. The sled is coming in super handy. Let's try and go this way to see if I can go over this route. I could go and warm up in here, but I'm not gonna. The amount of the cold damage I'm going to take is most likely going to get healed by the time I go back out. Yeah, the sled is... Uh, on Interloper, the main use for the sled was, as I predicted... For, oh god, the wind is against me. Uh, the graveyard is discovered, okay. Um, 
was this to drag a kill back to base. Now I'm very slow because of the stupid wind, but what are you going to do? It's tempting to maybe stay here in the church, but uh, we'll just brave it. And uh, it's not a... You know, you can get by without having it for sure, but it does make it easier, especially in places like this. So if I didn't have the sled here, if it didn't exist, which would have been all the runs up to recently, uh, I, what I would have done is I probably would not have quartered the moose. I would have stuck to normal harvesting, as I was doing initially. And I would have cooked as uh, much as I could. So what I always did in the past and which you probably have seen me do in this series if you have watched all of it is I've killed quite a lot of large animals and what I when I what I do if they are if they're close to base I would often quarter them and take the pieces back home but if they were far away from the base what I would usually do is I would harvest a few pieces of meat and then cook that while I cut the rest of the meat and I would just rinse and repeat that until uh, I either get all the meat Hold on. Wolf? No. I would keep doing that until I either get all the meat um, uh, or uh, the fire runs out because I don't have wood or the wind or something changes. And then I would just carry as much of it as I could on me. I would carry maybe 10 to 20 kilos depending on what was possible. Uh, usually the rule I would follow would be that I can be overburdened but not to the extent where I can't run. I have to be able to run even very slowly, which is usually like 20 kilos above your maximum, which is then yeah, impeded by tiredness. And then I would just take that with me and eat it on the way if necessary. And when I get to my base, I would drop it and then I would go back out probably the next day and pick up the rest. Or I would leave a pile where I killed the animal, just leave a pile of meat there as a reserve and I would just grab it if I happened to come by another time. So it was not uncommon to find piles of random meat around. So that's what I would do before. And what I would probably do before I have the sled in a normal run now. But now that we have the sled, yeah, it does change quite a bit. Uh, you can travel with so much food uh, much easier. Uh, I'm dragging 75 kilos of moose with me, you know. And also, I don't know if you ever noticed, uh, I got asked this question a long ago, but uh, why not always quarter it? Well, because when you quarter an animal, it's much heavier. It's about twice the weight. And the reason, no, it's not that steep. I've been here before, come on. Now, come on. Oh, I can't go up. Cannot carry Trevor over the edge. Okay. Okay, so we'll just do this then. Man, this pack is getting kind of heavy. Take everything out. Drop all the heavy things. Drag them down here. That's a bit silly. I mean, I don't, I've been there here before. I think I went the other slope, but still, okay. Bit silly. Especially downhill. I mean, come on. Guess we gotta do this. Pretty sure we can get down the rest of it. Uh, hyperferm. Oops. Hyperferm is still pretty far away. Hey, this is a bit silly, but it is what it is. Alright, one more. Pick this up. Oops. Pick it up. Grab that. Let's uh, deploy. Put it in.
I haven't actually checked, but I hope I can carry it here. <laughs> and there's as much meat as we can fit in, really. That's it. Alright, let's see. Alright, there we go. So, yeah. Uh, the sled is very, very handy for these things. Yeah, you're still walking slow, and for it actually has kind of an impact on people like me who are content creators, because now I have to basically narrate a long walk that's very slow. But, you know, I don't mind that, because if I was walking from one region to another and just walking, I would do the same anyway, right? Uh, more wolves. So it doesn't really change that much to me. It just really changes the circumstance, and that's it. So I'm all right. I'm okay with that. Besides, I know that a certain portion of my viewers actually use my videos to fall asleep to. So I don't think for them it makes any difference. I fled. Let's see if we can kill him. Nah, actually, I'm not gonna. He will come back, though, is the only thing. This is slow because of this, the damn wind. See how fast the wolves respawn? There's so many wolves there. I must have killed like 10 wolves in this region alone. Actually, how many have I killed? I killed two, uh, two in Milton. I killed four here, at least. I think five here. And two up now by the uh, by the movies. That's nine. Then I had a struggle with an aurora wolf. I killed another aurora wolf. Uh, I lost track, but I think I killed eleven wolves so far in this region. Oh, this is taking so long because of the the wind. But, you know, I could talk about this game forever. I have for a couple of years, actually, been planning to make a video called Why the Long Dark is the Best Game Ever Made. But I stopped making scripts for my videos a long time ago because it just takes so much work. And I actually don't like using scripts when I make videos. Not videos like these, but like tutorials and video essays and stuff. Uh, I sometimes have scripts when they are for very specific tutorials that are short and I want to phrase things in a very clean way that's quick and easy to understand. But no, I don't really use scripts. I just have notes about what I want to say and then I wing how I say it. I, I do the same thing when I teach, when I teach uh, students because I'm a professor. Uh, I don't have scripts. I don't have notes on my slides either. Uh, unless it's something complicated that I think I'll forget. And then I just wing what I say when I get to the slide. Because uh, I, I understand it. And if I understand it, I should be able to articulate whatever the content is on the fly. That's a general rule. If you really understand it, you should be able to just express it, right? Uh, and the long dark's the same. And I need to just, when they make that video, I just need to put together all the notes because there's a lot of stuff I want to say and I don't want to miss out so even though I don't use scripts I need to write down everything I want to talk about in order before I try to make the video and that's going to take a little while okay we made it back let's take out the meat first uh, moose meat can have its pile I don't know uh, here if it's cooked I don't know. Over oh, here, yeah, if it's not cooked. Uh, bear meat is cooked. Let's eat the bear meat. Okay. Take the bear meat, it's fine. Alright, let's go inside. And let's just find a place for this uh, moose hide right away. That took way more damage than I thought I would. Moose hide can be in here in the office. Why not? How's that? Uh, that's a bit too... A bit more in. On, on the keyboard. There we are. Make a little little carpet in there. And guts, like I said earlier, guts is usually not an issue because once you kill the large prey, you just have so much of it. 
All right, then we drop the meat. And uh, let's actually eat bear meat. Where's that wolf that fled? Is he really that far away? I'm surprised he didn't come back. Oh. Let's grab... Uh, can we carry how many? Two? Three? Yeah, I can carry three. Nice. And we'll harvest all of it or most of it now. Just drop that. And go back out. And we are done with hunting for now. I wouldn't say no to a couple more deer hides. But it's uh, not essential. Also, I need to repair this uh, sled at some point. Uh, which requires, yeah, deer hide for that. <clears throat> I can barely walk with this much gear. Uh, let's grab the bags. Which is just these ones. Let's douse this lantern, and now I weigh 100 kilos. Let's just harvest as much as we can of this. We don't have to do all of it at once, and we're going to do it by hand because we're not in a hurry. It takes twice as long, but we don't really care about that. Uh, I might go and sleep until it's light, and then spend the day harvesting this, actually. so uh, Although then you can see, see the animations, but that's okay. Let's do one more bag. And then we'll uh, leave the rest and we'll sleep. Actually, we'll, we'll change the plan. What we're going to do is... No, no. I was going to say sleep for 10 hours, but we're not going to do that because uh, I won't be able to sleep for 10 hours regardless. Uh, if I do, I'll wake up in the middle of the day and that's that's too much. Instead, we'll sleep um, a little bit tired and a good time. Let's sleep maybe seven hours, maybe. Yeah, maybe seven hours. We'll, we'll try that. <clears throat> okay, now it's daytime. Let's continue this. Have some water first. Uh, I'm going to be doing all of these bags now in I'm not gonna be able to one go. <clears throat> And there are six, I think. So, five. So if you really hate the housing animations, look away for the next 60 seconds, maybe. I'll let you know when it's over. Although I would say that you're not really miss <laughs> seeing much. It's literally just a hand grabbing something off screen, and that's it. So, yeah, there isn't really much to it, to be fair. <coughs> Whoops. I'll let you know regardless. And we're going to use our hands because we're not in a hurry and there's no real need to use the tools either. So let's just use our hands. We'll pass some time as well. Things can cure. We can get closer to the evening. And then we can sleep and recover health in the day. Uh, if the conditions are right and I'm uh, not that tired, I might move on and uh, sleep in the trailer or something like that. And not here. We'll see. We'll cook all this stuff later, uh, not now, even if the weather is all right now. I don't think I want to do it right, right now, because also I don't have that much wood. So uh, I think I'd rather prepare for that or cook it another time. I don't have to cook everything before I leave. I just need to make sure that there's enough resources here for me to be right when I come back. <clears throat> all right, that's all of them. 69. Uh, okay, let's have a drink. Let's go outside and drop all this stuff. You can barely move. Uh, it actually is uh, nice weather, but that's all right. I'm not going to cook this just because I can. Wolf carcasses are going away. We'll cook it another time. I don't have the wood, so I would have to break down stuff with the wood, and I don't really want to do that. So let's drop all of this stuff. There we are. Very nice. And uh, there's a couple things to drop in here, I guess. And the weather is very nice, and I'm not that tired, so I'm going to keep moving. 
and just uh, head towards that cave and sleep somewhere along the way. Uh, let's see, I got some feathers. I think that's what I used to put away. Yeah, feathers. Actually, I could really use more arrows. I only have three, I think. But where I'm going now, there aren't that many threats. Uh, I will encounter a wolf. I got, I got four arrows. Be fine. Uh, we can make more arrows later. Uh, because I've killed most of the wolves, I'll probably run into one here and there. And where I'm going, uh, there should probably be at least one more wolf, but that's okay. <clears throat> yeah, so we're good. We need a bit more water, I think. Let's grab two more liters of water. And let's grab some food. We need to find two more cattails as well, but they should be nearby in the, the ribbon of the farm, so I'm not too worried about that. So let's grab, let's eat a wolf meat. You know, fills us up. Yeah, we ate the whole thing. And let's take, uh, mm, how much? We're probably going to sleep, so let's take three pieces of bear meat with us. And then we are good. Stats are good, the weather is good, everything is fine. Uh, but we're not that tired. It's late in the afternoon. It's barely cold at all. So we can just go. We can even map. Uh, we could even try and map over here, but I think it's not going to really work. <coughs> All these dead wolves. Wait, when did I kill this wolf? I don't remember. Is that now? Whatever. Mm. Anyway. But now we got good weight. Yeah, we've got three kilos to spare. We're going to now head to the uh, plane crash. But we'll probably sleep along the way. Like, we'll sleep. Uh, well, if the conditions hold like this, we'll probably sleep in a cave. Uh, close to the plane crash. Or we'll sleep at the plane crash itself. Uh, I would run. But I don't really need to. Because it's pretty warm and I'm not that tired, so... Uh, I'm just gonna walk it, really. So this episode is a real walking simulator episode. Walking up to the moose. Uh, and then... Um, dragging the moose back. <clears throat> and then walking back up here again. But we're basically going to go in a massive loop now. We're going to head to the plane crash. And we're basically doing a loop and coming back into town. Uh, from a different direction. And by doing it that way, we will be exploring almost all of Mountain Town. It's possible to go out of bounds here. I think it's up there. I've only done it once, but I'm not going to bother doing that. A lot of crows out because all the wolves <laughs> that's been killed. Any more feathers? Uh, yeah, a couple. How, how's my wood situation actually? One coal, five sticks. Yeah, let's grab some sticks. I start like ten sticks or something. Uh, let's just quickly check out this graveyard there shouldn't be anything there and it should be mapped also yeah it does say it's mapped uh it is funny that it's its own location you know there are names on some of these graves uh but the only one that really matters so story-wise is lily where we got tyler clark and something hmm didn't say Any others with names? Yes, one. Ryan Smith, the Sunshine. Oh, must have been. Oh, he died when he was like 17? Oh, that's sad. But well, that's what Grey Mother talks about, I think, in uh, the story modes. People dying, people leaving. You know, over here, there should be a grave that says Lily on it. Or is it Lilith? Uh. I think it's this one. Liam Coat. Lilith, yeah. Lilith Barker. So that's the... Uh, 
Well, maybe I shouldn't say in case you haven't played Wintermute, but this is relevant to Wintermute. So yeah, I'll just not mention it just in case you're going to play it. Who is uh, this? Emily Camp, dearly loved. Also young, yeah. And Jessica Roy, also young. All young people. All right. <clears throat> Hey, random thing, have any of you ever played Baldur's Gate, the first one? It was remastered not that long ago, I guess. There's a place in, uh, oh, what was the name of that town? Uh, something on N. Nash, Nash, Nashkin or something? I can't remember. Anyway, there's a place you go and there's a graveyard there. And you can click on the graves and it will say, uh, how they died in some of them, which is and there's a lot of like, funny ones uh, Some just say regular stuff and some are hilarious one <laughs> Says uh, one of the gravestones says something like You know here lies John John was working in the mine and one day he looked up the mine shaft to see if the cart was on its way down It was <laughs> well, That's really funny and there's one where like you click and then this ghoul appears and he says stop touching my grave and if you do it again he just attacks you and this is some nice little easter eggs in that game ah it's an old game i think Baldur's Gate 1 is like 98 or something fantastic game though okay anyway have i mapped up here where the cave is yes most of it anyway not all of it, so let's just go up there. We'll, we'll map. Well, while the weather's alright, we'll map. The rabbits grow over there. There's a lot of like... The good thing when you kind of conquer the region and you have everything, all the resources, and you don't really need anything else, then you are golden to go and set and explore the little nooks and crannies of the world, right? Places you often don't go to. If we had a heat map of the regions, where people go you'd see that there's a lot of like little places that people never go to or hardly ever go to and those places don't necessarily have anything in them that makes them worth visiting but they are nevertheless places to go you know uh, i don't think this has been mapped uh this is map here yeah you run yeah that's better i like to have a nice clean map it's not just getting all the locations for faithful cartographer but it's getting a nice clean map that you can look at and point at and talk about. It's starting to get a bit cold, so I think we can run a little bit. Yeah. Speed things up a little bit. And then over here there's a corpse. There's actually a map here though, because I think this is not mapped either. Jesus, this is cold. Oops, I uh, clicked it away. Yeah, it's better. And this corpse over here barely appeared, but it did. And let's just map that too. Uh, I think I have looted this already. But in case I haven't. Okay, there's a corpse. I think this is always there. Oh, I haven't looted it, okay. Nothing, but we got wood. Which we will take. And let's just map here too. Now I'm getting cold, but it's fine. Yeah. And then it's let's so map cold. one more time before the bridge. Wanna lay down for a bit. So over here, maybe by this uh, tree. And then that's it. Then we'll go and uh, warm up, which uh, we'll do in a cave nearby. Uh, I think uh, there might be a cave here. I don't think there is. <coughs> But there used to be. Like a whole secret area over here. There's this map around here. Uh, but I don't think there's a... It leads down to the river. Anyway. Uh, this way. But there sh Actually, there might be... A small cave in here. Just have a look. There used to be one before they changed the region when they did the redux of the Wintermute episodes. Here we need two more cattails, this is good. 
But uh, yeah, but it's collapsed. This route here is collapsed. It used to be that you can you can go through there, and there was a cave on the other side. Uh, I'm cold, but you know what? Just health. I don't think there'll be any. There's no wolves that are on here. Uh, the reason there are no wolves here and I, is because of um, um, the bear. Okay, we have uh, we have twelve cattails, so let's leave that. But yeah, it used to be there used to be a crashed car down here too. I think they removed that too, and you used to be able to go through there, and it would lead you to a cave, and that would leave you back on the other side near the plane crash. But that has been collapsed, and you can't do that anymore. Uh, you can. Oh, the car is here. Okay, is that on the map? Uh, maybe. Uh, but you can still access that cave I'm talking about, but you got to do it from the other side. There's a few little weird things uh, remains of the the old version of the region here and there. Like if you map very closely, uh, maybe they patched it now, but near Greymother's house, if you, uh, there used to be at least that you could map, and you'd see on the map that there was a rope anchor. And people were like, well, why is there a rope anchor on the map? There's no rope anchor here. And you're looking around, looking around, you can't find it. And it's basically hidden behind some rocks because it used to be. Oh, I don't need the Tarmigan, so you can just flee. It's fine. Uh, there used to be a, um, a rope anchor there, but they removed it. So it's kind of like in a rock. I'm taking a lot of cold damage there, but I don't really care. Tarmigan nest, that's what I wanted to map. And uh, uh, hypothermia is setting in. We're going to sleep for 10 hours. We're going to drink a herbal tea. And that sort of thing. So we'll be fine. <coughs> and where we're going, once you wake up, well, there's only like one wolf there, I think. So I'm not too worried about it. We killed the bear. And they're usually a good rule. In case you're like, why I'm talking about there's no wolves there. A good rule is that, generally speaking, if there's a bear in the area, there isn't a wolf. The bear is kind of like dominating, so the bear takes over. That's this call. I think I will map the rest of this uh, after I slept, so I don't take too much damage. There's a very few areas where there's a wolf and a bear at the same time. There are some, though. Uh, I want to map over there, too. But I want to warm up first. So up here around the corner is a cave. You can find loot in this cave. This cave leads to the bunker. Actually, I forgot to mention that, actually. That's another thing we need to do is the bunker. That's, that's this way. Because we still need that recipe. We still need the recipe. Uh, so we need to uh, check this bunker. But we're getting kind of low on health, so I'm going to sleep, recover health, and then go back out the map, and then go back in again to uh, get the... Uh, uh, to the other side. But let's just sleep here. This is why I brought some extra food. I just want to make sure I had enough for this journey. A really straightforward journey, but because I'm mapping, it takes much longer than you think. Okay, so there we are. We're in this cave. And there's a carcass there. Is that a wolf carcass? It is a wolf carcass. Huh. You don't get a lot of those. Did not even know there was one here, but then I, I've been here like... I only really go through here on long runs. Wait, so that means almost never. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Let's eat some bear meat. Let's drink a herbal tea. And some water. And let's sleep for 10 hours. Yeah. The herbal tea doesn't actually do that much. It sounds like it's something that's really great. That's going to really speed up recovery. But actually it doesn't do much. It's like 6% or something like that. It's very low. 
Um, but that's okay, you know. There we are. So we have a lot more health now. We are full. Let's go back out. I want to map some more here. There's only really two things, which is this cave and down there. So it should be quite cold because it's early morning. Oh, there was even an aurora in the night. There we are. I want to what? I want to map one more thing, but I'm really cold, so we're going to go back inside. <clears throat> we're going to pass time. So warm. Go back outside. Run down to that one place I haven't mapped. This is why I brought so many charcoal. See, I had 24, and I told you it seems excessive, but we already used half of them. You don't need to use them, but I just like to have a clean map. So. Uh, it's very cold. Looks like it's a sunny day, so I can make a fire if I want to. But I don't need to. But here. Down here, the, the end of the road. I haven't mapped that. It looks like there's something there as well. I didn't see those crows last time. Is it a deer? Yeah, it's a deer. These are the sort of areas that I'm the least familiar with in the entire game. If you asked me what was down here, I would say probably nothing. Because it's a sort of area that's miscellaneous in the game. The dead end past the bear. How often do you go here? Like almost never, right? Almost never. Because why would you? There is nothing to it. Uh, so I'm not that familiar with it really. To be fair, there isn't anything down here. It's just the deer carcass, and that's it. So when you come here, you really just go up here on the left. you got to get past the bear, that this is the bear's territory. So you got to get past him, either kill him or just get... Oops, I went too far. Or get past him. Um, and then, then you want to go this way to get to the bunker and the plane crash. And that's it. And you don't even need to take this way to the plane crash. This is really a dead end. You can go this way and you can kill the bear and then that's it. Like the bear is like the end of the road. If you want to get to the bunker, you have to go through this way because the bunker is on the upper level. But there are two routes to the plane crash. You don't have to go this way. You can go via the tower we repaired. If you go that way, uh, it will lead you to the plane crash via the other route, which is the route you take when you play Wintermute. When you spawn an episode one in Wintermute, you take a route into um, to Mountain Town, and you can just take that route in reverse. So you don't need to take this this route here. It used to be, I think, that you had to do it this way because there was like a drop uh, that made it a one way going into Milton, I think. Uh, but they, they've changed this region quite a lot over the years. All right, I don't think we need a torch or lantern. It's quite light and bright, so I think we can just walk through. I don't think there's a lot of loot here. There's some coal, probably. I think there isn't a lot of coal here. There's one. Let's look for textures that look a little bit different. Uh, I think it'll be... What was that? I don't know, but other than that, I don't think there's a lot to it, really, in this uh, cave. There's someone to pass through, really. We'll save the lantern field. It's to the right now, I think, but on the left, I guess, there's a little cave. Ah, oh, there is something. Coal and wood. Take the wood, why not? And a backpack. Alright. And a campfire, that's it. Alright, so there's something, I guess. Then we gotta crawl through here. And I think that's, that's it, yeah. So now we're back out. I uh, would we'll wait to warm up, but we're gonna find the bunker very, very fast. Uh, but we're also gonna map, so I'm just gonna go out map and then go back in. So let's do that. So this is the other side of this complex. Now we're here, got a map, and you can see where we are relative to where we were before. We're now on this side, so we basically walk through here, like that. And we're going to go back inside and warm up. 
And we'll just, uh, we'll actually sleep for an hour, I think. Let's just sleep. It's really that hard, though. Sleep one hour, warm up, get a little bit of rest as well. There we go. Pick that up. And then we'll map at the bunker next. The bunker's just around the corner. If you want to know what all the bunkers are, by the way, uh, there's a playlist by someone called Big Fish. Uh, and if you go on my Discord, link in the description, I have a channel in my Discord called Guides, which is a locked channel where only me and mods can post. And in that, uh, that channel, there is a link to a playlist which has uh, all of the bunker locations, if you want to find them. They're always in the same place. It used to be that the bunkers were completely different. Those of you who played the game for a while will remember, this is Maptus, that there used to be that you could only find these prepper cache, the bunkers, in Mystery Lake and in Pleasant Valley. There was one in each region, and there were, I think, nine different places they could be, and they were very far away and inaccessible so you had to really look to find them and then they would have either lots of wood or lots of food and medicine or guns or tools um and they did not exist on interlope but then they changed it with the uh dlc and part two of the dlc which was in march 2023 i think they um they changed it so now there's one bunker in every region basically not every region, but there's nine bunkers in total, and they're always in the same place. But the difference is that, uh, well, on Intloper, they're all empty, but on lower difficulties, I think three of them are fully stocked with food and things, and then six are empty, and you just got to find the stocked ones. And one of them has a recipe, and on Intloper, the, the, the bunkers are all empty, but one of the bunkers, one of the nine, will have a recipe, which is the prepper's pie. And you can, if you're lucky, also find a hammer uh, and a couple of smaller items. But it, other than that, it's generally empty. Anyway, let's go inside. We haven't been in this one. We're still looking for the recipe. We have checked like four or five bunkers. All right, so this looks a bit promising because it's, it's got a different design. I checked this great. Uh, I think this might be the bunker. Let's check. Uh, no, it's not this one. And you can check, but you on Interloper you shouldn't find anything. They'll all be empty except for like, yeah, you can get metal from this, you can get tinder from that, and there, there usually is a bed. So the bunkers are useful on Interloper because they provide a bed. So that's good. But the one we want is the one that has the recipe in it. And that's not this one. getting a blanket and then we have over here we go down and then we get to this area if you played Wintermute you are very familiar with this area this is the area where you spawn uh, well just up the road is where you spawn and you um, you make your way down here and then down to the right here to to Milton. And there's rabbits and stuff here. And this is a, a one-way drop now. You go down here. And has rabbits. Oh, and wolves, apparently. I thought the footprints were a bit too loud. Yeah, there should be one, sometimes two wolves. It sounded too loud for a rabbit, yeah. And this is a one-way street now, so you can't get back up there, see? That's why you gotta go through that cave to get to the bunk, and then you can't do it. Now, it is actually possible to get back up here. It is possible. It's a little bit janky. I've never actually done it myself, but I have seen it being done, and I believe you do it like this. You go up here, I think it is. All the way up here. I think it's something like this. It's been a while since I saw the explanation of how it was done. 
And then you hug this wall and try and get up here. And then you go on this side. Uh, it's something like this anyway. I might not, might have done it wrong. Mm, I don't think I did it right. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. I, I don't remember exactly how it's. Or maybe it's over here. Let's try one more time, just for, just just for the sake of saying we tried. Uh, I'll tell you more about it after uh, if you want to know how to do it. Uh, but yeah, it's something like this. I can't remember exactly, but it's something like this. Uh, to get as high up as we can. This is where we were before. If we're now even higher. Okay, and then I think we want to go back up here to get even higher. Is that right? Well, maybe it's not. Okay, I'll we'll, we'll try now, but I think I'm doing it wrong. I think this is not how you do it. Uh, give it a quick try here, though. You got to be on top of this thing. Yeah, I, I think I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, we'll leave that. Because I've never done it. But if you do want to get up there, it is possible. Uh, you can look up a video by someone called STM Santana on YouTube. And he has a video on how to do it. Uh, if you think that name sounds familiar then just check out the long dark maps and have a look at who made those maps. And no, I'm not talking about Whiteberry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he has a video. I've seen it, but I've never tried it myself. So that's why I don't know how to do it. I don't think there's usually a wolf here, but I think the wolf I killed was that wolf. So I think we're good. I might make a fire to warm up um, over here by the plane because uh, it's uh, sunny anyway and it's not that cold uh, minus 11 so a few sticks will do then I can map after that so here is Will's plane this is his plane uh, crashed and there's a few things to find here let's uh, make a fire let's make it uh, down here I'm freezing. Uh, there's a stim here too, it might be over here actually. Oh, okay. Let's make a fire here then, like right there. And let's do sticks. Uh, I could use coal, I suppose. Got some coal, maybe I should use one just to make it easier. Come on, little fire. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so let's map here. Yeah. And there we are. Very nice. And this plane crash here got a few secrets. Now first of all, let's just have a look. So here you can see a good view of different things. Uh, but actually there isn't much to it. This is pure scenery, this stuff over here. And uh, if you go down there, you'll find that truck and everything. And if you look right over there, right there where that waterfall is that's where we came out of uh, when we came into milton a while back that is where the cave is that goes back to mystery lake and you can actually see this spot and uh the truck I that we're pointing is down here so all right, right let's try and stay near this fire for a little bit um is it, do i need anything maybe i should uh yeah let's eat some bear meat uh, let's actually uh, just have a drink. Let's uh, make a birch tea just to pass some time and warm up a bit because I saw I have this. Yep. Get some birch. So let's just create that. And let's just make that tea as well. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. So. There are a couple things to find here, so uh, somewhere either around this plane crash or down here where the debris is, there will be the um, the uh, firmus, the jackrabbit firmus. Uh, there's also a stim here, and I think those are the only two things that really matters, but you can also find things like scrap metal, some clothing, jerry can. I'll take the jerry can. 
so this this is worth coming here it's not necessarily a priority to come here but if you are in mountain town you should definitely come here all right the stim i already seen it it's over here and it's the stim this is one of the guaranteed ones in the game this stuff will come in handy and it's good to have it because i used one i have two now and uh the one i used early with the aurora wolf i was the first one i used this game when i did my fun fact we're on day 140 something right uh fun fact when i got to day 140 ish on my last run where i went to 500 days by the time i got to day 140 i had used all of my distress pistols shells and i also had used nearly all my stims i actually used my last stim on day 400 but i found i think two stims later including this one but yeah let's uh let's actually warm up a little bit more uh let's put a couple of sticks on here let's speed this up a little bit and uh, let's just make uh how much cloth do i have one okay let's just make some water like half a liter or something Pass some time, pass some time, and there we are. And then I think we'll grab some torches. Only good ones, though. Uh, that's decent. Look away if you don't like bright lights, because we're going to stack again. That's all right. Let's just chain this fire for a little while. We got the we got the space for it. All right, I think that's good enough. All right, so let's look around for the firmus, and we got scrap metal here too. The firmness could be here, could be down low. We're going to go there either way. Wood. Uh, we got cloth. I have broken down these crates. Uh, these ones. And at least in the past, they were all empty. I don't think there's anything in the crates. So there's no point breaking them down. However, maybe in the long run, I will come back and open every crate in the game. It's one of those long-term goals you can do. There are only a few crates in the game that regularly have loot in them. Uh, and they tend to be always the same crates. Okay. And we're just going to jump down there. Load of row sips down here as well. There's also a deer carcass for some food, which we don't really need. I tend to leave all the deer carcasses. Because... Uh, they provide feather farms, a lot of wood too. Speaking of feathers. Uh, I don't think you can see the truck from here. I think so. There's the debris site of the crash. Yeah. And by the way, do not try and go down here. If you try and go down here, you get to this place, it looks very tempting. You will die. <laughs> okay. There are death rolls in this game to prevent players from going certain places. And most of those death rolls aren't places people wouldn't go anyway. Because it just seems like, yeah, how would I even get back up? So most people won't experience them. But there is one here. So if you try to go down here, you will die. It is possible to get down there nevertheless though. There's always ways to circumvent those death rolls. But I wouldn't really bother doing it. If you're really curious on how to do it, uh, there are two people you could look up. Uh, Archimedes LP, I think, has a guide on it, I believe. And there's also a uh, long creator called GunTech1. I think he, he, uh, he, I know he has done it, and he has a video on it as well. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the crash site. Uh, I might map here again, even though I don't think it's necessary because we mapped above us. So I think this should not really achieve much more than that. But nevertheless, let's just do it for good measure. And yeah, it didn't really change anything. All right, let's look closely around here then. Uh, let's look in here. Jerry can. Exactly what I was hoping for. I like jerry cans. One of the long-term goals is to refill all the jerry cans. Have I written that down, actually? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of the goals, yeah. Uh, right. Let's find this uh, thermos, though. Backpack. 
container. Hey, beans. Wool socks. <laughs> uh, mm, there it is. There it is. Look at that. The jackrabbit thermos. This is the coolest one. All of the thermoses, of which there are seven, I think. They all have different designs. Some of them are really cool, but this is the best one, though, with the rabbit. Really, really cool. You used to be able to buy, I believe, um, uh, coffee cups from Hintland that had this design. But they ran out of that very quickly. And when they opened the shop again, I think they ran out very fast. But I think they're going to make more of them. You know, enamel cups like this, but with this design, I believe. Uh, I definitely want one, that's for sure. Very cool. If you don't know the relevance, by the way, I believe that in Wintermute, uh, Will's airline is called Jackrabbit Transport, I, I think. Uh, but anyway, it's a cool design, if anything else. So. And this looks like this will be a bear cave because of all this stuff. But it's not. It's just a regular cave. And you are actually warm here, at least warmish. And you can actually sleep here too. But it's not a very good place to sleep. Okay, so we got what we came for. We got the stim. We got the... Uh, the... The... The firmus. And we also got a jerry can for good measure. So I think we got everything now. Is there anything to map here that I missed? No, but this area here is on the way back to Milton. So we could maybe map that. But yeah, that's it. So now we're done. So now we're going back to base. And we pretty much have seen all of Mountain Town, really. Outside of the basin, that is. I remember when you you, you 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 didn't be you used to not be able to carry torches up, so you had to do this, and then ah, oh, there's a wall. Okay, so you got to try it again, and you have to throw on the side. You know this whole thing, and okay, now it landed there. Now you climb, and then you have to pick up the torch again, and that was a whole thing. And if you watch, <clears throat> or if you have seen any of my old walkthroughs of Interloper. You'll see me do this quite a lot. But then they changed it, and it was one of those invisible changes that they didn't announce in any patch notes, but they just added it in. They added it when episode 4 came out, which added black rock to the region. Then they changed it so you could climb with torches. Yeah. There's one more over here. So that is pretty much all of Mountain Town. There's a couple smaller places... Uh, outside of the basin we haven't been to. We're mostly going to see them now as we're taking the other route back to Milton. There isn't much to it. There's like a couple of caves. And uh, there's also the archway uh, near Milton. And that is pretty much everything there is to it. So Milton, it seems, a mountain town, it seems like a big region, but it's actually not that big. It's because it's a very linear region. You pretty much just have... Milton in the center and then a road that leads in a kind of loop around it which leads to a cave which leads to a plane crash which then leads back to Milton in this massive loop um, then you have that plus the basin and that's pretty much it that's mostly what Mountain Town is so it is big but it's kind of deceptively big if that makes sense it's not as big as it seems because of how the terrain is is uh, is uh, structured, and also the torches are similar. So let's just do it this way. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's a nice region, though I think. Even though this is aimed at beginners, like it's it's labeled as kind of like an int, like a beginner easy type of region can be a bit difficult you know uh, it's easy to navigate i think it's i think it's probably the region of at least the larger regions that is hard to get lost in because it's, it's very linear so at worst you follow the road and you end up here and you have no idea like where is this i don't know and then eventually you'll find something but it's hard to really get lost here because there aren't that many detours you can take um 
and there's lots of things to loot in the center so it's quite beginner friendly but there are quite a lot of wolves here i must say <laughs> there's quite a lot of wolves so it's not that easy that's for sure um but there are then again no region is easy really in the long run now over here there is something so down down over here is a route down to milton but before we go there over here is a little path to this cave i was talking about and last time I was there, there was a little bug. I wonder if they fixed it, where you could put a campfire in the stone. So this is the path I'm talking about. Let's see if they fixed it or if it's still the same. If you no, it's still the same. See, if you craft a campfire here, it actually goes in the stone. And uh, last time I did it over here. Let's see if we can find an even weirder spot. What's this? What's the smallest place that it actually sticks out? Uh, looks like it would be somewhere over here yeah that's this is pretty close let's make a fire here a good measure there we are <laughs> i haven't changed this in like three years huh. come on little fire come on little fire yeah and we can just why not put some sticks on there and uh let's just chuck yeah. this so there's our little uh, little campfire. How about that? Map here too. Didn't really reveal much, but uh, and let's uh, light the torch. And let's just let's put one of these. So over here, this path uh, thing leads to a little cave. And it used to be, you could use this as a transition route, which would lead to the bear area, uh, the bridge. But they changed that uh, quite a few years. They changed it with the redux of Wintermute, which is ages ago, 2019 or maybe 2018, actually. I don't know. Anyway, here's the cave. Because uh, the way it used to work before, you can actually see the bridge over there. There's the bridge right there. So you, you can used to be able to go through there. Uh, more wood. Uh, coal. And more coal. But this cave doesn't have a name and it gives you protection, just like the cave by the plane crash. But that's it. Because uh, the way the long night used to work until recently was that winter mute the story and uh, the survival was always linked. So whenever you change something in survival, it would affect the story mode too, because it would use the same maps and items and all that stuff. So here's the blocked path. And this is what leads, would usually lead to the bridge, but they blocked it. I don't know if you can get through it. I assume you can't. No, it's not even worth buying. And this is map now anyway, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. We can, we can do this though. I mean, why not? Eh, revealed a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so, and also, if they change something in Wintermute, if they change something in story mode, like the terrain, they would also change it for survival. And as a result, there were certain changes, like when they added episode 3 of Wintermute in 20... I think it's 2019. Um, they added Thompson's Crossing to Pleasant Valley. And of course, and in survival mode, you also got Thompson's Crossing, as well as the plane crash also in Pleasant Valley. That was not there before. And when they did uh, overhaul of Redux, they changed uh, 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 Mountain Town and also some in Mystery Lake. That was changed in survival as well. And so on. And then Blackrock was released and that was in both survival and in uh, <coughs> in uh, story mode. Uh, in story mode, there's some minor differences. In story mode, the bridge is working, but in survival, it's not. Those sort of things. But then with the launch of the DLC and the Tales from the Far Territory, they changed all that. Uh, they decided that it's it's uh, it makes it twice as hard for them, twice as much work. And most people just play st uh, a survival mode. Uh, and, you know, most people play story once. There are some people who love story and play it many times. And also, because you can save the game in story mode, 
some people prefer playing story mode as a kind of survival. Uh, so there are there is a group in the Longer community who loves story mode. Uh, but because they were linked, it was so much work for them. So what they did was in 2022, in December 2022, we had the Great Reset, where they uh, made it so that all of your save games in survival mode was lost and no longer worked. And the reason they did that is because they decided to finally split survival mode and story mode into what is effectively two different games. And the main reason they did that is so that they didn't have to update both all the time. If you added something to survival mode, they didn't have to constantly update story mode and vice versa. It just made so much work for them. So they made it into basically two, two games. But because they had to then separate the two, and there was a whole reprogramming issue to make this work, it basically made all saves incompatible. So as a result, when the Tales from the Far Territory was released in December 2022, all of the survival games were reset and they were lost. So I had an interloper run that I survived almost 1,100 days on, and that was then lost and everything started from scratch. A lot of people were unhappy with this, but most people accepted it because also they told us about it way in advance, so people were prepared for it. But of course, there's always people who maybe had taken a little break, hadn't played in maybe six months or something, or a year, and said, ah, oh, let's play this again, and they come back and it's like, where's my saves, you know? Uh, so uh, that's why uh, they separated it. So now, if they make changes in survival mode, it does not impact story mode and vice versa. So that was the whole point of that. So now it's easier for the developers, basically. Let's map here. Uh, by the way, I should clarify that... Okay, there we are. The saves aren't technically lost. Um, if you have a save from before the DLC came out, so before December 2022, or if it was on co if you're playing on console, it's actually March 2023, and then they aren't lost. They are still there. It's just that they are incompatible with the game version you're playing. Um, why are there footprints? Oh, I came from there. Yeah. However, if you're playing on Steam, and I think it's only Steam. I'm not sure about Epic Store. Actually, I don't think it is an Epic Store. Anyway. Playing on Steam, you can actually play your old saves if you want to, because they keep a code for each of the major updates. Every time the game receives a major update, which is an update with a name, where they call it something, okay, here's patch 2 point whatever, which is called Eternal Flame or whatever, you know. But they add a new region, or they add a new this, or they change this, or whatever. Major updates, they all have names. Whenever that happens, uh, they uh, take a copy of the old game. Let's see, can I go down here? The answer is probably yes. I want to see if I can. Let's just see if it's possible. Come on, I want to go down there. Is it really blocked off? Come on. Oh, okay, I was going to go down there, but whatever. So, uh, it is possible to play all of the old versions of The Long Dark all the way back to early access. It's actually possible to play the first version ever released for early access. Version, I think it's version 0 0.2 or something. You can play that, but it only works on Steam. You have to go on Hintland's website and go on something called Time Capsule. Um, if you can't find this, search for a Time Capsule. Uh, on the long dark and it will take you to a page and you can click on the patch that you want and then there's a code there and what you do is you go on steam and you uh, I can't remember if you activate it or not I think maybe you, you go on properties of the game and you input this code I'm gonna go check out the art tray over here and uh, then it will change the game version to the old version that you want uh, it's recommended that you save your files before you do it. Just copy the whole long dark folder uh, if you want on a drive or something and then do it just in case. I've never had issues with it, but just in case, you know. And then you can play whatever version you want. Uh, you can play any of the old versions. See what the game looked like before. What did the game look like before the DLC? 
What did it look like before they changed the cooking system? Here's the archway. What did it look like uh, before they added the moose to the game? And so on and so forth. You can do all sorts of things. Well, three there. Um, tempted to kill one. Uh, there we are, by the way. Now we've mapped pretty much everything. We've been everywhere in Milton. Pretty much. This hasn't been mapped properly, but we'll get back to that. And the thing is, then, if what you can do... You can... Actually, go this way. We don't need to kill anything. What you can do is you can go and you can install the version of the Long Dark that was before the DLC hit. Uh, I don't know the name of it right now, but it's whichever came before the Tales from the Far Territory. If you activate that version of the Long Dark, which is what the game looked like in basically November 2022, then you can play your old files. They are still there. They are not deleted. They're just laying there in your hinterland folder. And they are just inactive. You can't use them because they're incompatible with the newest version. A bit like some games like PUBG and Overwatch. Whenever there's a patch, the old replays don't work anymore because they changed something. It's the same. But if you revert the game back to that state, that part, that a version of the game, you can then play your old games. Isn't that fun? But it only works on Steam because you need the codes, unfortunately. And there are some players who are actually playing on the old version of the Long Dark because they want to stay with their uh, their old run. So you can do that. That was a long explanation, but I'm just saying you can do it and that's how you do it. If you want an extreme example of that, uh, there's a YouTuber called Even Dark. Uh, he was featured in a video I made called Surviving Forever in the Long Dark, where at the time there were two people that had survived 11,000 enemies on, in the Long Dark, on Interloper. 11,000 days. Um, and one of them was Even Dark. And the thing is, we don't need to map anything here unless I find something. Um, he actually reverted the game back to the old version and he kept playing. And I think he's up to 20,000 days now on Interloper, I believe. But he is playing the old version. So that means there's no Tales from the Foul Territory, there's no Frontier Cooking, uh, there's no Ptarmigans, there's no Sled, there's no Radio, you know, there's no Loot Refresh, and a bunch of other stuff, you know, so you are stuck. But to be fair, I think I would be happy playing the old version as well. It's a... Uh, the game has been fantastic for a long time now. Uh, to the extent that I don't think... Uh, uh, you know, I think every version has been perfectly playable for a long time. Uh, I did start, I have tried the oldest version of the game myself. And uh, I have a video about it uh, on my channel. I think it's called Retrospective Gameplay, where I play the uh, first playable version of The Long Dark. Uh, or rather the first released version. I think there was one version prior to the first version which only Kickstarters could play. And uh, it's quite fun. The earliest playable version of this game when it was in early access on 2014 looks very different from this game. The graphics are nowhere near as beautiful as this. And uh, everything is janky and stuff, but the spirit of the game is still there. They still have the feel of the Long Dark as early as the... Uh, actually, I'm not going to light this anymore. We're going to uh, go home and sleep. I could cook the meat, but I'm not going to. Uh, so even the earliest versions still have this, this feel of isolation and survival in winter. So the same feel is there from the start. Even the weather is, is there from the early game. They don't have the Aurora, I don't think. But the rest is, is there. So yeah, it's been fantastic for a long time. And this is why when I sometimes play new games, like Northern Lights or uh, the RVE game, I forgot the name of it now, <laughs> and that sort of thing, and it's very janky, you know, you know, early access games are all janky, and then they get good. And Long Dark is just fantastic. Yeah. 
You see, I can talk about it long enough all the time. Doesn't matter if I'm dragging the sled or walking around or what I'm doing. I just I can talk about it non-stop. It's a fantastic game. It never ceases to amaze me, and it will always be fantastic. And if for some reason the game would be ruined by some update that everyone hates, you can just revert back to the old one. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. And you can revert back to the old saves if you want to on Steam. Uh, let's grab some meat and let's go and sleep. And that's it. Let's do a little bit of inventory management here. Uh, light this up. I don't think I paid up anything to cure. Yeah, I did. Two saplings. Drop those. Uh, and uh, what else? Yeah, we've got some misc stuff here. There's, uh, let's leave. We can put the thermos in here for now, but I probably will take it with me, to be honest. Painkillers and all this stuff. Don't need any of that. Okay. Uh, then also we have the jerry can refuel this. And we're going to take some stuff back. If it's heavy, we'll just take the sled, so that's fine. So we have now pretty much done Mountain Town. We even mapped a ton of it. But it's pretty much done now. There's a few dark patches. These ones, uh, I think we probably can map that out. A couple places there we can also map. And uh, we do need to map the basin properly, but we're going to leave that. We might go through the basin now when we go home, but we're not going to spend any time there. But we will come back to the basin in a future episode, and I will do something special there. And uh, that will be fun, but that's not going to happen for quite some time. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the cave back. There's a couple mapping issues here, but we've got a near perfect map here. Are we done? Everything. I don't think, other than the basin, there, I don't think there's anything we haven't done. I think it's all done. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's a good region, this uh, place. Load of cattails if you need it. Yeah, that's good. So what we're going to do next time, I think we should make some arrows. Uh, to be fair. <clears throat> so make arrows. Uh, we can say optionally cook uh, the moose. Um, and then uh, decide what to take back to base. Oh, sorry, main base. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do next time. But first we need to sleep. I, I want to sleep 12, uh, sorry, 10 hours, I think. So I'm going to pass time a little bit. Uh, I don't actually quite 10 hours, but yeah, I think this is probably fine. Let's drink and then sleep. I put ten. <sighs> All right, there we are. Let's eat that <clears throat> wolf meat and then drink, and then we are good, I think. So there we are. Then this is great. This base is. Ready. We got a bunch of stuff. We got every hide. We got guts. We got saplings. We got food. We got water. We got supplies. The only thing that's not here that I should consider bringing is uh, tools. Let's actually maybe make a note. I'm surprised I didn't find any tools. So maybe I took them. I probably took them back to base last time I was here, to be fair. Let's actually make a little note of that. Uh, let's put like, if returning to Mountain Town. Bring some tools for the farm. They're not really necessary, I suppose, but it's nice to have one tool, simple or quality here, just because then it allows me to repair my hacksaw, repair some other things, uh, craft arrows faster. So it's not really essential, but it, it's it's nice to have one here. So that really should be here. There's usually quite a few tools there in Milton, but I think maybe I have uh, taken them in the beginning. But anyway, 
we have conquered Mountain Town now. So other than maybe some cooking and some bits and bobs, we are pretty much done. We have done everything. We established a base. We are good. So now I can return it whenever I want and I'll be golden. So we are done here. For now, anyway, we'll come back here for sure. We'll pass through a couple times too, probably. And also, we do have to go to Hashtra Valley. Hashtra Valley is a great place. I look forward to going there. We're going to do that later, though, because now we have finished doing Milton. We have to go back to our territory. Before we do that, though, we have to do wrap up here and take some stuff back to base, resupply, and just make sure we're ready to go. And uh, if I have a moose side back in the main base, which I don't know if I do, maybe I do, I might make a moose cloak and travel light rather than being warm. We'll see how we get on with that. But yeah, other than some wrapping up business, we are done. And it's approaching the time to go back to the far territory. So that's the plan. And then we'll do some more adventures after. But that itself is going to take quite some time. With that said, hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you next time, survivors. Bye-bye.